Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at how to take control of your fans with your MSI motherboard. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so on today's video we'll be taking a look at how to take control of your spinning masterpieces on your MSI motherboard. Now this is particularly for, well, actually it's not this particular board, it's a very similar board. We're gonna be using B550 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, but essentially most of the boards now work in a very similar way using the Red Dragon Software Center, which some of you may be already thinking as soon as you've heard that, oh God, but actually it's really decent software, very flexible, and it's certainly very helpful in working out the, uh, the fan curves to your liking on an MSI board. So let's go over to the PC and I'll show you in action. So this is my uh, desktop for the PC and this is the MSI Gaming Edge Wi-Fi board as we said. So what you're gonna need to do is make sure you've got the Dragon Sensor software installed. Very easy to do, just go to the MSI website, go for the applicable one for your particular board, download the software, let it update, and then you should end up with one of these little icons down in your taskbar. Alternatively, if you haven't, then you may find it in the Windows Start menu under Dragon Center. So let's open up the Dragon Center, and this is the main home page. Now yours may look slightly different, sometimes it opens up in a different part, but essentially we've got gaming mode, user scenario, monitor, gaming highlights, etc., etc. And the one that we actually want to take use of at the moment is going to be user scenario, which to some people may seem a little bit odd. You'd think really it should be a monitor or something, or they should change it and actually call it fan monitoring. But anyway, let's go into user scenario. So in user scenario, these are your fan profiles, and also these will include things like overclocking as well. So you've got the option for extreme performance, balanced, silent, and customized. Now customize is the one we're gonna be wanting to use. So you can either click on to customize and it will just change everything to a custom profile that you've already set up. But if you actually wanna modify your settings, click on the cogwheel, and we get into the profile setting. So in here, it tells you all the different options for CPU frequency, etc., gain boost on or off, all that kind of stuff. But the thing we're gonna be most concerned with are these down the bottom. So we've got the option for fans, we've got the CPU fan, we've got our pump fan, and also we've got our system fans. When you're actually installing fans on your system, it's better if you can use the system fan headers individually to kind of even out the load. Now, in this particular instance, I've got six fans connected, which are from the up here range, which uh, we'll put some links in the video description. But these are really easy to use and they come with a single hub. That hub has a single pass-through, which is a PWM connection, which I've connected onto system fan header three because it was the closest one to my actual kind of where the cables terminated. So if we go into system fan, as you can see at the moment, it says zero RPM. Now this is because it defaults to show system fan header number one, which is not always applicable. So what you're gonna to need to do is to click on the cog button again, and this is where we get the settings. Now, if this is how yours is set up from the get-go, then you'll probably find that the, uh, the settings are wrong, but don't worry. What you need to do is go up to this section at the top and select the header that you've actually got your fans connected to. Now, as you can see on this particular board, we've got an absolute ton of system fan headers. And in fact, I could have unplugged each fan individually, but I want them all to be the same speed. So we've just used one header, like we said, system fan three. So if we click on that, then things start getting a little bit more interesting. So we've got our RPM, which is currently monitored and also there's various other options. So let's have a quick look through. So this is your fan curve. And if you put your mouse over the dots, then that gives you the increments that it does. So as you can see there at 53 degrees C, we're looking at around about 21% on the fans. Now I've set this curve deliberately because this PC is behind me in the studio. I don't want it to be as quiet as possible. And I've also set it to be a maximum of 70 degrees and that takes the fans up to 100% to stop things getting a little bit too toasty. So this is in the smart fan situation. Smart fan really should be renamed PWN because that is basically what is running on the PWM system. If for some reason your fans do not support PWM, there are three pin ones, then what you'll need to do is go into manual fan, which basically means voltage DC. So in this section, you get the three kind of settings. So 100%, you click on that, and the fans will ramp up to their full speed eventually. These fans get up to about 16 to 1700 RPM. So it's gonna take a little while for them to get up there, but eventually they will do. If I get my microphone close to the PC, You can uh, tell they're ramping up. Now, obviously, 
visually you can also see that as well normally but let's uh, turn that down so let's go back to 50 percent which still isn't going to be ideal because 50 percent of the full speed is still going to be around about 800 rpm which is a little bit more than what we needed so what you can do is depending again which fan you've got so if it's a three pin dc this is about all you can do but in smart fan mode what you can do is click on fan tune and then what this will do is if these are new fans that you've installed because the motherboard doesn't really know what the uh, the peaks and the lows are of the fan it'll go through and test the fans on that particular header work out what their slowest speed is work out what the highest speed is and then it will plot a graph giving you an approximation of where the system thinks is the ideal kind of fan curve or fan speed curve this can take a little while so we'll let it go through doing that whilst this is happening you will hear the fans ramp up and ramp down as it's detecting the rpms and also the voltages and all that kind of stuff you possibly will get to a point where the fans will actually physically stop when it gets down to the very lowest rpm or lowest voltage it can do and this is a good thing don't worry about your fans stopping it's absolutely fine it's just detecting the low points so as you can see from the automatic selection there with the fan tuning software it's now set a rpm of 1243 or 1250 approximately around about 55 percent so that for me is not acceptable because the fans are still audible so all you need to do is just to drag these around until you find the sweet spot for you so again i'm going to set a uh, a relatively uh, modest curve there we'll set it to 70 percent roughly and just move those around however you want to just to keep things nice and quiet i generally with this then when the cpu is in normal idle modes between sort of anywhere between 40 and 60 degrees there's not going to be a huge ramp up but as soon as it hits that 60 degrees mark and then starts edging up even higher then it's really going to kick in now obviously if you wanted a more kind of straight line you can start from down here and basically move those around however you see fit so there's almost like a, a linear graph there so as it goes through different stages this is going to be down to the individual depending on the noise levels that you uh, will tolerate with your fans and obviously each fan does have a separate kind of audio characteristic so some fans you may find that they start fine at 40 then maybe shifting up to around about 50 and something along these lines obviously if you want the fans to be 100 percent at a much lower temperature so you can set the curve like that so we've got 50 degrees so this just to explain if you haven't worked out already this bottom section is degrees celsius which is registered for the actual processor and this graph on this side on the left hand side is your speed in a percentage so let's change that back to something a little bit more uh, acceptable to the uh, the noise that I'm prepared to accept. Uh, just move those over. Yes, I think that is uh, that's much better. So again, similar sort of curve doesn't have to be exactly the same. And then once you've done that, you can go through and do it on your other system fan headers. Now, like I said, I don't have any others connected, so. Currently, they're just going to be registering zero RPM and they'll be in the normal kind of DC mode because it's not detecting a signal. So that's all well and good for the system fan. So let's take a look at the CPU fan. So we'll just go back. Again, you've got pump fan as well. Generally with pump fan, it's a similar sort of deal. I would essentially say with the pump, as long as you can tolerate the pump noise, just leave that on 100% all the time. Again, you can choose smart fan if you want to. And because it is a pump header, you can choose to have it... If full whack from the get-go or if you've actually got a fan connected to your pump header then again you can set it to a more uh, tolerable level again just drag and drop those left click on them and you can drag them to where they need to be move them all around that kind of stuff again really you should do fan tune on every fan but you don't necessarily have to but it certainly will help you work out what are the minimum and maximums of the individual fans so that is that one so let's go back to the cpu fan so again pretty much the same deal now this is a little bit more awkward for me because i'm actually using an aio which is the fractal s36 and that actually only has one cable which goes into the cpu fan so that controls both the radiator and also the fans as well so as you can see this is on idle but still we're registering basically what is the pump speed but then the pump speed gets translated to fan speed you get the general idea so again we can click on the fan tune button and it will then go in and work out what the highs and the lows are 
of that particular device. So we'll let it quickly do that. And there we go, it's done its job. So essentially it's actually registered pretty much the same. So again, we can lower this a little bit. Don't think it'll go lower than 10%. Oh yeah, it will do. So again, you can set the curve as you see fit. I'm actually gonna change this because I'm doing some benchmarking soon. So I'm gonna set it so that it gets to 100% at 60 degrees, which I think is uh, probably where it needs to be. And this one is actually a little bit on the noisy side, so I might even change that down a little bit lower. So that is the uh, the fan set there, and again, we can go back in. Sometimes it will actually go in and change your other fan headers when you do smart fan tune. So yeah, there we go, that's gone back, so let's drag that back down. On some boards, fan tune will do an individual uh, port. On others, it will do the entire system. So if you find that you've changed one and then you do fan tune and it's gone back and they've all changed again, then uh, yeah, fan tune has done all of your fan ports that are connected. Ideally, you should do fan tune every time you change fans or add a new fan to the system just to register the high and low points. Obviously, depending on what the fans are, if you've got fans which are temperature controlled, then you don't need to worry about that. But if they are PWM or voltage DC, then you definitely need to go in and uh, make these changes. So that, I think, is pretty much it. Once you've done that, it'll be saved in there, so you, every time you boot up the system, it'll load those custom settings. It sometimes will take a long time, so once the PC's rebooted, you may find it a little bit noisy on startup until the Red Dragon Center has initialized and the icon is visible down here in the taskbar. But essentially, that is pretty much it. So these are things. We can maybe do some videos on these other sections if you want to at a later date, if you do want to see how that works. Even things like Mystic Light, then do let us know in the video comments. I think that's going to pretty much wrap it up for this one. You can also, as well, uh, access a lot of the settings for this actually in the BIOS as well, if you don't want to install the Dragon Center. We have covered that in a few different videos with the BIOS tour, so if you want to check out any of those, we'll try and put them in a playlist so you can check out ones for your individual board. Although, realistically, most of the modern MSI boards from around about the B450s upwards all work in a very, very similar way. Anyway, hopefully this has been helpful to you. And... Uh, yeah, hopefully it quiets down your fans. Okay, so there you go. There is how to take control of your fans with your MSI motherboard. Again, this works for pretty much most MSI boards from around about the B450 range upwards. I don't have any older B350s or A320s to test on, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be a very similar deal as well, as long as they support the Red Dragon sensor, which you can find out that from going to your motherboard's webpage on the MSI site, choosing your individual model, and look in the download section. If it supports the Red Dragon sensor, then there's a very strong chance that you can use this software to take control of all your fans. So hopefully this one's been useful to you. If it has, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this on a regular basis, hit that subscribe button and also the channel icon, and you'll be notified of future video releases. So all that leaves me with is to say, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.